weeks, and we're going to be doing the MLB uh, early look and lineup build. I'm going to do the solo. To, yesterday, I actually did have had a decent day, um, both baseball and NBA. Nothing really to speak of, but um, just just to report it. Um, and today, we have a very full MLB card. We also have a full NBA slate, which I don't think I'm going to be able to really participate in because I'm leaving at like 6 30. Um, Bobby's going to be handling the live tonight at six anyway. Um, so I'm just going to be focusing on the baseball. I'm gonna, probably going to, I might play hockey, but hockey doesn't start till eight. So it doesn't really fit too well with my schedule and the, the truck series race in NASCAR. Uh, I might not be able to get into that either just because again, of when I'm leaving for the evening, but again, baseball is kind of cool because you can at least get a sense for what you want to do early and you could set most of your lineups and then just make a couple of tweaks a little bit later. So let's take a look, first of all, at the way the slate looks. And then we'll take a look at the projections. We'll go game by game, and then we'll, we'll do a couple of builds here. So again, the way, the way it, it, it shakes out, you have seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven o'clock games. No, six, seven o'clock games. And then just pretty full all the way through, right to the Dodger game at the end. So you do want to do some, if you can, do some late swapping as, as information comes on in throughout the course of the slate. But that's not what this is focused on. A couple of, uh, of weather things to consider. So far, the two games that are, and I guess we'll get to them, but the two games that are, are threatened are Minnesota-Detroit to some degree. Is that even on the card? I don't even have that actually on the slate, so don't worry too much about that. But the uh, the uh, Yankees Cleveland game, which which I really was gonna like the Yankees, looks very um, it looks very uh, grim. Um, so we'll we'll see how that that plays out. Then there's a couple of win games. The uh, the Red Sox wins blowing out. You have the Mets wins blowing out a little bit. And the White Sox Reds wind blowing out a little bit. Dodgers wind blowing out a little bit. So we'll we'll consider that as we uh, as we go through all this. And feel free to ask whatever questions you might have throughout this. All right. So we could go game by game. Man. Okay. So let let let's take a look at at Milwaukee against Baltimore first. We have. Okay, so Freddie Peralta against Tyler Wells. So Freddie Peralta is going to rate as one of the top pitchers on the slate. We're going to pull up my sheet just for this particular video, and you'll see that Peralta is, boy, he's not as as, uh, as dominant as I thought he was going to be. Like when I first looked at the slate last night, I thought it was going to be Gausman and Peralta and then like a big gap. It looks as though Peralta is just kind of a, a guy. And at 20% ownership, maybe he's not a big priority here. But – Certainly does rate, you know, listen, here are all the pitchers, certainly in the mix, but at, at the second highest ownership, maybe, maybe this is worth worth fading to some degree, but he certainly looks okay. Uh, Tyler Wells on the other side of this, I mean, it's 7,700. I mean, if you rate them by either points per dollar or sheets value score or whatever, they're, they're pretty darn close. And you're getting Tyler Wells with half the ownership. So I think that's actually, it's actually pretty reasonable, you know, so – you play kind of a low owned Tyler Wells instead of Peralta. I think you're kind of getting ahead of the uh, ahead of the field here a little bit. Um, now, when it comes to the stacks, I kind of like look at the stack tool here, and just again to see what we're looking at. We rate these either by just kind of raw points over on the left, or you can rate them here by just points per dollar, which is in the middle, or by modified stack, which is essentially using sheets value scores here as your measuring point. And when I look through it, you know, Baltimore or Milwaukee, I have Baltimore. Wait, where are they showing? Why are they? Oh, I'm doing it by alphabetically. Baltimore, I don't really see them showing up like much at all. Wait, where where is Baltimore in my? This is odd. All the way down here. That's very surprising to me. Oh, because he's against Peralta. 
And then Milwaukee, again, likewise, all the way kind of down here, I guess. So I don't have any of the hitting when you just rate it by raw points. And even when you, you factor value in a little bit, not really getting to any of these. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Milwaukee and Baltimore really didn't show up uh, at all um, on, my, on my numbers. Um, so Colorado, Toronto, you have Gausman and Feltner. And, and this is obviously, to me, going to be the clear – number one, uh, specifically on DraftKings. Um, you know, we remind ourselves what these sheets look like. What's up, K9? And he has a pretty, you know, not, not a huge edge over everybody else, but, but, but big enough where you have to consider him the best play. And he's going to be sufficiently owned, but just to play one high-owned pitcher is not that bad as long as you don't play both. And even if you play both, as long as you get really different as far as your hitting goes. Uh, but I think, I think that, uh, is going to be obviously the best play. And the big buy is going to be at least 60% on, I think. Um, you know, the cake matchup, all the strikeout upside, and all that stuff. Um, as far as Feltner goes, it may as well double check, but no, I'm not really getting any of him. And when it comes to the stacks, again, we're just going to rely on this for now. And we'll do, we'll do a build at the end of this. I'm not even getting to Toronto. I thought I'd be getting to Toronto, but not really. Even against Feltner. So, I mean, I have Toronto rated, what, seventh? I guess that's okay. But I have teams that are rated better, which are lower owned. So, probably going to be off of everything except for the uh, for, for Gaussman over here. So, this one's a little annoying. When I looked at the Angels-Boston game, like last night, when I was just previewing the slate, I really thought that both of these pitchers were going to be my clear uh, 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 SP2s. And the reason for that was literally just based on my game while I'm watching. I looked at, at Hauk, and Hauk had a 35 and a 27. He has a whole bunch, all kinds of strikeout upside, and he hasn't really walked anybody. Um, so I would imagine that he'd be a really, really strong play. And then likewise, on the other side of this, you have Detmers, who he also – you know, he had 12 strikeouts in his last game against the same team. Um, so, I mean, what, what can I say? And then seven strikeouts the day before. So I was just imagining both these guys to be top SP2 candidates. And yet then, when, when, I, when I pull up the, 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 the rankings here, I have them very average, to say the least. Like I have Detmers here, Hauk here. And I don't get it. I, I guess the best I can come up with is because of that weather that I talked about. Um, just to repeat, I mean, there's going to be wind blowing out, I guess, to 20, yeah, 20 miles an hour or so. And, yeah, I guess that's what's keeping this ownership, this projection low. Is it, in the absence of that, I, I couldn't imagine either of these guys not showing up um, to the point where, I mean, if, if these – if these ownerships remain at 10%, 12%, I might just say screw the projections and and, um, and screw the wind and just play it, you know? I mean, it's not like they rate that much worse than any of these guys. I mean, they're a point lower, two points lower than these other SP2s. Uh, and if I don't want to play both Gaussman and Peralta, I mean, I'm really that scared of, of, of Luis Severino. We're going to get to him in a minute. I mean, these guys rate, listen, a couple of points below, but lower ownership. I'll, I'll, I will, I'll, I'll take a shot. And with the 20 mile an hour winds, I mean, you can't have it both ways. I imagine that you got to have some projection from the, the hitting, but not really like Boston all the way down here, angels all the way down here as far as raw points go. And then as far as value angels, okay. The angels look pretty good. And here's, here's kind of a trick. What I like doing for uh, when I when I do my hand built stuff, one way to use these tools is literally just to look at it. And it seems kind of silly, but you look at your modified stack score and then your modified ownership, and just see if there's someone with a good modified stack score that has low ownership, and and the angels show up right like that. Now that's not the end of the story, right? But but it, I think it's a good kind of little shortcut to to figure out who might be low owned uh, low owned that has a shot. So I think the Angels, as far as the, you know, respecting that win, and we're going to get to another example of that in a minute, 
have a good combination of low owns uh, and and upside. So and the Angels are pretty pretty reasonable here. Um, so there are three sides of this game I might like: both pitchers and probably the Angels. All right. So Yankees, uh, Cleveland. As I mentioned before, this this is the most dangerous weather game which is kind of a shame because I really wanted to play the Yankees here against Carlos Carrasco. I've been pretty vocal about, you know, Carlos Carrasco's career in the last like couple of seasons. They figured they'd give him a shot to bring him back to Cleveland. I don't think it would matter. I think that if this game played, I think the Yankees would, 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 would torch him. But as the game is not going to get played, probably, then there's really nothing to do. And what's really weird is that, I'm not getting that in my ownerships. I mean, my, my, my rankings, I'm getting the Yankees rated like just as kind of like a, a second level team over here, which doesn't make any sense to me, but I guess cause they're too expensive. Maybe. I don't know if this game does play, you get to go ahead, feel free to play the Yankees against Carrasco. All right. Um, Atlanta against Miami. So it's another season of, you know, the, the same speech is about Max Fried. You know, he's a very good real life pitcher who just doesn't have a lot of fantasy upside. And to that point, by the way, doesn't seem to be a great real-life pitcher so far either this season. <laughs> Two starts and just getting crushed. Um, I mean, I could argue to take a shot at Miami just in case something is structurally wrong with him, but that's go going a little bit too overboard, I think. Uh, let's take a look at these pitchers, though. Like, I, I still see Max Fried listed like – for example, there's no, I don't think there's any universe way to play Max Free over, say, Reed Detmers or, or Tanner Houck. Um, so I'm not going to play him. Uh, any Miami pitcher here? No. So probably going to be off of them from a pitching perspective. Let's take a look at the hitting here, see if either Atlanta or Miami looks good. And I can tell you right away that Atlanta is going to look to be the top overall on the slate. So you have Atlanta, number one. Their ownership is not that high, and part of that is because they're probably really expensive and tough to get to. Uh, when you play Acuna, Albies, Riley, Olsen, and Azuna, for example, let's take a look at the prices. Just for fun, let's see what that would look like. Now it is against Rogers, so you want to play the righties? Well, you get switch hitter. Yeah, look at all these. So... These are all really expensive. That's what makes it hard. You know? But like, if you if, even if you wanted to play Gaussman and you played some other cheapo, like, I mean, you can't do it playing. Let's say you played Irving or whatever. You could sort of make this work. Or if you wanted to play both, you know, one of these or two of these guys together. Let's say you wanted to really fade the weather. Can you play both Tauk and Detmers? Probably not. But so you could play these Atlantas. It just it just it just puts a lot of strain on you. But you can certainly do it. Uh, and nothing uh, for me on the uh, on the Miami side. Um, all right, where were we? White uh, Royals at the Mets. Uh, weather should be fine by the by this game. And you have Michael Waka, who's coming off of a big-time ceiling performance. Look at this. How about that? Eight strikeouts, two hits, seven innings. You know? This is not his normal thing, though. Mets, Mets have been out of nowhere just putting up all these runs. Where, where did this come from? Eight, five, 16 against Atlanta. Look, what did they do in Atlanta? They killed these people. I mean, they took two out of three from Atlanta. By the way, that's fun. Wow. Um, so you're seeing Severino, I think, showing up as kind of a value over here. Let's take a look. Yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> you, you really want to do this? I mean, he certainly looks like a good play. Kansas City is there. They're... I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just biased. I end up playing Kansas City more than most people. But I don't know if I want to if I want to do that. Certainly looks like a decent play, though. Third best overall value on the slate. 
well, kind of tied with Peralta and Abbott, which we'll get to in a minute. Waka is not showing up for me, so probably won't get to him. Let's take a look at these stacks. Let's see if the Mets or the Royals show up over here just, just for fun. Um, we'd have to show up in the value piece. I mean, not really. So I'll probably be off of them. But if listen, if Severino does continue to get owned somehow, and I could play all those Kansas City dudes who just smash every game, uh, I might try it. But I don't know. Sever something about Severino at 6,800. I mean, like it looks like a good point per dollar play, but – uh, what do I know? I, I probably end up playing. All right, so Cincinnati White Sox. So this one's kind of interesting uh, because I mentioned that you have the wind blowing out in this game. And you have a situation here where you see Andrew Abbott, who's projected to be 20% owned. He doesn't project all that great as far as his, 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 uh, you know, his fantasy points go. And at 20% ownership, it's very interesting. And considering that that I just said the wind was blowing out 20%, um, I think this is a pretty cool opportunity to 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 get some leverage and play the White Sox. And it's it's justified when you look also at the stack tool, which I alluded to earlier. So if you sort these by modified stack, you see the White Sox. You have them here, they're rated like third, fourth, like sixth or seventh, like sixth, really. When you look at their ownership, it looks really, really low. So if you want to play these these White Sox against a high owned Abbott, against a high owned Abbott who, quite honestly, has not done anything this year, um, I give you full permission to play the White Sox. As a matter of fact, kind of inclined. I mean, we'll talk later, I guess, when we get through this. But I think the White Sox might be my favorite so far. All right, Texas, Houston, uh, Dunning versus France. Can't imagine. Well, I shouldn't say that. Let's see. No, nothing really. France is, you know, all the way down here as a, kind of like a – he's a punt that could show up in 150s. And then where's Dunning? I haven't played him in like forever. He's all the way down here. I mean, nothing special. But let's look at the hitting because um, this would feel like a good hitting situation. Let's see if that bears out, though, on the rankings. Um, not really. Tech, well, Tech's, they're okay. They're third, for I guess sixth is fair. And the other thing that's kind of cool is you look at the ownership. They look pretty, pretty, uh, pretty reasonable. They don't look so great as far as value goes. So surprising to me, uh, not much for Houston and Texas. They looked okay. I guess, I guess the problem was, was, was the, was the pricing. Cause I think you get Seager at six K or something, not to mention Garcia from 500. But I mean, I think it's, I think this is a good pivot off, your, off of something like Atlanta. I think it's pretty reasonable. Okay, so St. Louis against Arizona, you have uh, – oh, you got the B-Fat. Uh, Brandon Fat against uh, – I actually call him the fat guy – against Steven Matz. And it's pretty curious to see where my sheets come out on this because you, you look at the, at, the, uh, at the pitchers and I'm not, like, getting any of it. Like, Matz is all the way down here. With like an eleven point projection, and Fad is barely on the list. I, I think they're giving a lot of respect to this park because when you look at the at the stacks, you're seeing Arizona here. They're Arizona's rated like sixth or seven, but you have St. Louis rated about fifth, and they're actually getting quite a bit of ownership. Here, again, they're like one of the highest-owned teams, which is not – I mean, you don't see that too often. I guess there, again, there's a lot of respect for this uh, for this ballpark. 
I'm inclined to fade it. Um, if listen in the hand builds, but in 150s, I mean they certainly look reasonable. But if this is what the the highest owned team is going to look like, I probably end up trying to fade it. Washington, Oakland's um, two pretty weak teams. So when you when you have two pretty weak teams, you, you usually end up being able to make a case for all four prongs of this, being both pitchers and both hitters. And I don't think today is any exception. Like we'll take a look at the hit at the pitching first. Like you see out of nowhere, Jake Irvin, you know, one of the top point per dollar plays, if not the top. Yeah, he's the top point per dollar pitcher on the slate um, at only 10% ownership. Um, and then you have Paul Blackburn, who certainly within the mix of these other guys we talked about at less than 10%. So I think both these guys are in play. And then when we go to the, to the stacks, let me check this out. Like Oakland, Washington are my top two when rated by modified stack score. So this is kind of a weird sneaky game where you can play all four prongs of this and it's 940. So you can late swap it and be well within your white or your, well within your whites, well within your rights to do so. Very strange. Is this the last one? Chicago, Seattle? No, there's a couple. So Cubs at Seattle, you have Bryce Miller versus I guess Jordan Wicks or is it Justin Wicks? It is. Jordan Wicks. Uh, I didn't think I saw anything here. Let's take a look. Bryce Miller, very, you know, fringy play down here. You know, 13%. I guess it's okay. Um, and then the Cubs. I didn't really get to that picture at all. And let's see, take a look at the stacks here. Again, we're just looking for Seattle's and Cubs, so I imagine they'd be in some kind of value ranking, if at all, and I'm not getting to that. So for me, very fringy exposure maybe on Bryce Miller, but aside from that, um, yeah, join the join the club, BMAC. You never get the stacks right? Well, great. Welcome to baseball. I mean, it's hard. There's a lot of combinations. There's a lot of, a lot of teams. It's tough. It's tough. I wish I could tell you, well, your process is flawed. And your baseball's got a lot of variance, dude. You know, all you can do is 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 hone your process and keep firing. I mean, I wish there was a better answer. Listen, if you tell me that you keep playing uh, NBA guys who rate to get 38 minutes at, at at good point per dollars and none of them seem to be cashing, I would say there's something weird, but just not getting stacks right. Uh, welcome, welcome, to, welcome to the party, right there. Right. So uh, all right, San Diego against the Dodgers. All right, so you have – why do I not have Yamamoto rated higher? Do I not have him projected for some reason? I, I think so. No. What is with this? Why is Yamamoto have a 14-point projection? This is This is going to be something I do not understand. I mean, doesn't this – what does this look like here? So if it's five scoreless earnings in a win, he gave up, gave up some stuff, I guess. But I don't know about this. And they progressed him with the pitch, with the pitch count, 43, 68, 80, at home against San Diego. Yeah, nothing but incredible hype coming into this. 10 scoreless in his last two? I don't believe I don't believe a word of this. And 10% ownership? I mean, you you could just you can sign me up. We'll, we'll we'll get we'll get Bobby in here at 60 to confirm this, but you can sign me up for this piece bit of business. You want to know the truth. Um Michael King, Michael King stinks. Wow, look at even Michael King, 24 fantasy points putting up these numbers. Uh, yeah, someone else can play Michael King against the Dodgers. Let me see how the Dodgers themselves look, or I guess the Padres for that matter. Uh, Dodgers doesn't, don't look very intriguing today, nor does San Diego, either from a value perspective or, yeah, 
Um, one thing I would say, by the way, which I, I guess I, I, I glossed over when we talked about this game, was that uh, I did talk about the White Sox being a good stack from that Cincinnati game, but Cincinnati themselves look really, really good. They're just going to be really, you know, look like pretty chalky. Like you see how Cincinnati rated like number three and modified, but their ownership is really high. That's why I'd prefer to play like the White Sox at much lower ownership. Um, so B, uh, B Mac is saying the Padres crushed him in this last meeting. Um, okay. Sounds good to me. Keep his ownership down. Um, yeah, that's the thing, B Mac. It's a, it's a rough game, that Baltimore Boston game. Uh, well, it's not a rough game. I mean, like, think about it this way. Like, Baltimore is a good park, and Baltimore has good bats. Well, excuse me, Boston's a good park. Baltimore has good bats, and the wind is, is favorable. So you could definitely make a case for that. All right, so let's 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 build some lineups here, and let's just see again what what Saberson would have us do. You know, um, with the same projections that I was looking at. And so what we'll do is we'll build fifty lineups. Well, actually, again, I keep saying wrong. We'll build five thousand lineups. And we'll see what we end up getting here. Meanwhile, this master's cut is going to like plus four or five. It's tough conditions. I like it. Okay, moving along. Oh, look, my, Max Home is tied for the lead with my uh, with my with my win bet on him at sixty to one. Okay, okay. All right. So when we build these just with nothing else except using this large slate default, right? And again, to filter in what this means, saber score large slate. We click the I here. Hold on, let's do this again. That's 0.3 times some of my projection, 0.7 times the 99th percentile of the lineups, minus 0.6 of the average. Okay, so it's pretty aggressive. What I'd be getting, um, oh, sure, K9 Kalisman's the clear winner um, as far as, you know, gun to my head, but. All right, so let's take a look at the stacks. First of all, before we get to the pitchers, it would be getting Reds. Ooh, how about the Angels? That's pretty cool. It came up with the Angels as kind of the lower owned of those. Uh... Oh, I was – oh, the Baltimore. I'm sorry. Baltimore. I, I, I had the wrong thing with Baltimore. When I was talking to you about Baltimore, Boston, I'm sorry. I forgot the Baltimore was home against Milwaukee. Uh, but, yeah, I do like the Baltimore bats a little bit uh, as, as leverage over Baltimore. Um, Anyway, uh, the Reds, high owned. You're getting, you'd be getting above the field on that. Then Angels, St. Louis, Atlanta. Some of the teams we talked about. They don't really want me to play the White Sox, though. Uh, and then with respect to the pitching, it would be Gaussman. Let's look at exposure. Gaussman Irvin. Uh and it's, there's no way it's letting me play any of the Yamamoto on DraftKings. So it's going to have to – I'm going to have to figure out what I want to do about that. It's going to get me a, like 4% Detmers and none of the Hauk, I guess. But that's a lot of respect for that, uh, for that wind, I think. We'll have to think about that. 
So let's do a um, let's do a uh, a contest sim. And you know, people have asked me. Well, they haven't asked me as much because they just presume I'm going to talk about it. Is what settings to put in when I do my baseball sims? So like, what I mean is. So I have the, the, the contest here, and you have to right-click this, and you, you enter, well, let's use this one first, relay throw, add contest in. And the question is, is really what field lineups are you going to use? Like what, what field of lineups do you want to compare your builds to? And it's a tough question. You know, you, you could rely on the default, which is the, you know, Saber Sims back-tested fields, you know, this, this flagship NME setting. Or you could use your own builds, like your own 5,000 lineups. And when it came to basketball, like in football, uh, I used the, my own builds because I was a lot more confident that the field was going to look like my builds in basketball and football. And the reason for that is because basketball and football are just much more projection oriented. Okay. And since I was very confident that my projections, you know, reflected what, you know, the industry was going to be doing, that um, I was confident with that. But with baseball, I just, you know, remember my 5,000 lineups I built were based on some pretty aggressive Saber Sim uh, settings. And for me to presume that the field is going to play that way is very cavalier. So I think that I'm going to, for baseball, stick to what their defaults are, like the flagship MME for um for my for my settings and then likewise in the seventh inning stretch we're going to use whatever they recommend high stakes 20 maximum so now we're going to run the contest settings and these are like little decisions you make along the way you know uh and the next one we're going to the decision we're going to have to make is what we do about kind of um non-traditional stacks Take a look. All right, so where's this ball going? Let's make it into the bunker. Oh, that's a good shot. Really good shot by Bryson. Um, okay, so uh, let's see. Relay throw, risk adjusted ROI. And we'd be getting <laughs> what a surprise. All the Colorado against Gaussman. We uh, let's look team stacks. All the Kansas City against Severino. All the Colorado. So Saber Sim is in a mood. Uh, and with respect to stack exposure, mostly legitimate stacks. So you know it's going to be up to do, to you. <laughs> Uh, how aggressively to rely on these sims. Because if you do, these this is what you're going to end up playing. And I, and I warned you about this before the season started. Like If you're going to be playing sim-based baseball, you're going to be getting stuff like this. You know, you're going to be getting Rockies against Gaussman. 34% of it, by the way. And then 52% Kansas City. That, that at least seemed reasonable. You know, because I, I particularly didn't like Severino, but again, Sims don't care who I like. So it's just a question of what we want to save for now. Like for now, I am going to just save these just so it happens, but we're obviously going to change all this. But it's good to save something so at least you don't just have dummy lineups. And just for fun, let me see what the seventh inning stretch would look like. Mostly Kansas City and Boston, but of course the combination of Jake Irvin and Tanner Howden. Yikes. So, listen, like I said, if you're going to play baseball and you're going to use this contest sims, this is this is this is what you're going to end up doing. Or at least making the decision of whether to do that or not. You know? So, that's 
pretty much it. Although, you know what, just for fun. Let's, let, let's, oh, I don't think I was able to run a FanDuel one yet. Because look, Saberson even, I don't think they even had their, oh, they did. So I can do my FanDuel builds uh, soon. But I can't do them now. Um, okay, that's going to do it. Uh, good luck, everybody. At 6 o'clock, Bobby's going to be here. Um, you want me to review everything? I mean, I just watch it again. But I think the, I, I like the White Sox. Um, I think that's kind of a fun play. I do like Kansas City a little bit. And, I, you know, one thing I like to do with the Sims is if the Sims do agree with kind of this funny take I had, then I'll roll with it. So Kansas City, I don't mind. White Sox are fine. And the rest, I'll just go with what the Sims kind of tell me, I guess. Watch for that Yankee rain out. Uh, and as far as pitching goes, I am inclined to just say F everyone and just play Yamamoto. But I would like to talk to Bobby about that first.